Hello everyone, this is Eagle again. And in this video, we will explore how to become a customer support ninja and save heaps of time. My goal with this presentation is to really make it very simple for you guys. So you won't spend too much time figuring out what the customer wants, what are the action steps that we should take and so on, and to make it very easy and quick for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and discover what types of inquiries there are and what should be our responses to them. There are two main types of inquiries, at least that's how I split them. The first one is pre-purchase, meaning that it's either someone who is interested in buying your product or just someone who's, who's sending you something unrelated. The second one is after purchase or post purchase, which means that the customer has already paid you money and the item has either arrived or hasn't arrived yet. Now honestly, if we choose which ones are more important, then obviously the post purchase are more important and should be prioritized higher. That's because at this stage the buyer can leave us feedback, they can open cases, uh, they can contact eBay regarding a purchase that they made with us and then eBay will have to intervene. So this is the, these are the messages that you will have to put more attention to. Okay, the other type is pre-purchase. Statistically speaking, with messages before purchases, uh, some of them will be translated into sales, but uh, mainly most of them will just be a waste of time. So honestly, here you want to prioritize them lower and the only answer if this is something quick for you, if you don't really need to do a research with. So let's actually start with them. So what kind of questions do we expect when someone isn't yet our customer, hasn't really paid money yet? They can ask regarding the item's color, the item's availability, does this item come with X, Y, Z, etc. And if you know the answer immediately, then you can answer right away. Sometimes it's a good hint to make your description better because if the description is unclear regarding what's included or what colors or sizes are, then it would be a wise idea to notice that, uh, let's say, three, four, five people are asking the same question and you can answer it in the description, then just put it in the description and it will make two good advantages. The first one is that you won't receive as many messages from buyers, so it saves you time. And the second advantage is that you'll increase your conversion rate, because this means that people are knowing what they're buying, and sometimes, you know, some people will ask you, that's right, but some people won't bother, they just go back and see other items that have that information available and skip purchasing your item. So that's a good idea to, to add to your description if you notice that an, an, a question is legitimate and especially if it comes over and over again. But if it's something that's very specific, let's say someone is asking regarding his own uh, position uh, or maybe his own uh, car model or um, maybe something that has to do with the uh, specifics of their location and electricity questions, stuff like that. If it's something that you don't know right away, then uh, don't bother uh, answering. Now, if you really want to be um, nice and uh, courteous with your customer or potential customer, then you can refer them to the website of the original uh, manufacturer or brand, but uh, that's not really necessary. The next question is, uh, why is your price so high? So this is something that I don't really understand why people ask because, you know, if it's too high for them, then they can skip and go ahead and buy from another source. But sometimes you do encounter these messages. And my answer to this is that we price our items according to our supplier's price table. Uh, these prices are updated automatically. Uh, stay tuned as we do have uh, um, from time to time discounts and uh, promotions on our site.
Okay, something like that. Usually people who ask that question are not going to be your customers because they know or they think that they can get this item cheaper at another place. Next question. Can you offer a discount? Now here it's, it's something that is uh, depending on uh, what's your goal. So let's say you really want to have more uh, purchase history in this item and you have a healthy profit then yeah, why not? You can offer a discount, you can offer them maybe a bonus item if they buy this from you and so on. But usually if you're doing drop shipping, especially from doing arbitrage, let's say from Amazon or Home Depot or whatever else, you don't have a lot of room for a discount. So what I would answer is that uh, we always offer our best price uh, to our customer uh, on eBay and we do this uh, because we want to pass the savings on to you our buyer um, something like that also in addition you can mention other benefits that you have for example uh, we do have uh, fast shipping we pride ourselves with the fastest shipping in the industry you get you'll get your item within let's say three business days or you can say that we offer free returns, uh, that if you don't like your item, you can always return it, no questions asked, and we will pay for the return shipping. So you can kind of give another advantage or benefit from buying from you, even though you don't have a discount to offer. Okay, next one is, please sell me five thousands of this item via PayPal or via uh, another uh, kind of uh, payment solution. This is uh, 9 out of 10 times a uh, scam because uh, usually people know that the price is high because honestly if they're wanting to buy 5,000 or 500 or 100 of those even they better be doing a very good research before they just spend their money on someone on eBay. And so usually these ones will try to scam you because they know that uh, uh, you're selling your dropshipping and uh, they have their own methods of uh, opening cases on PayPal, on eBay and trying to extort money out of you. Also because this is uh, something that they're asking to do outside of eBay, uh, it even gives you more red flags. So watch out from them and you can tell them that if they want they can buy from you on eBay or you can even uh, in this specific listing create more than one quantity. You can create like 20 it item quantity for them. You can tell them that they can buy it like that. Uh, but uh, don't really bother uh, answering them and giving them a, uh, I mean a price break or stuff like that because it in many cases is a scam and you don't want to really take the risks with that. Another one is something along the lines of could you send photos of the item or can you please send how the item looks inside the package or outside the package. Uh, it basically says that uh, these people want you to invest some time in doing something for someone who hasn't uh, really paid you yet. And it's not something that we can do. Uh, of course, uh, the other fact is that we don't have this item in our hands. We have it in Amazon's warehouse or Home Depot's warehouse. So we can't really take a photo of it. So you can tell something like, uh, unfortunately, we cannot take the photo of the item because it is located at our warehouse or for fulfillment center. Uh, what we can assure you is that the item is exactly as described as and as is on the photograph and if you're interested in returning it after you buy, bought it, uh, you can do it for free. Also uh, take into account that sometimes it can be maybe a competitor that will take this photo that you sent and use it in their own listing. Okay, now let's go to the more important inquiries, which can be also cases, by the way, in the Resolution Center. And these are the post-purchase inquiries. We split them, again, into two parts. The first one is when the item hasn't arrived yet, and the other one when the item arrives. So before the item arrives, the customer might ask, where is my item? And here you will have to decide what you're going to answer because if you have shipped it, then you can obviously send them the tracking number. 
sometimes when you ship with Amazon, they will ship with Amazon logistics tracking. And for that, you have a few workarounds. First one is that there is a service called the Blue Care Express. They will convert the tracking number from Amazon to something that is approved by eBay. And many monitors and listers have that uh, incorporated into them. So you can uh, use that. Uh, also, you can send them a screenshot of the logistics uh, tracking number and the situation of the item or the status. So it will obviously show if the item has shipped or hasn't shipped and send that to the customer. Or you can just tell them that the item has shipped. Please rest assured that you will receive it within three business days. And usually it will be okay for them. It will be enough. Now, if the item hasn't shipped yet, then it's either a delay from Amazon or your supplier and you'll have to patiently wait and ask the buyer to wait. Or if it's an item that went out of stock or the price is all of a sudden too high or any other reason that prevents you from shipping the item, you'll have to be more creative here. So you can say things like, our shipping carrier is uh, holding the item for too long or there is a delay in shipping due to uh, any reason that you can come up with, for example, uh, weather if it's applicable or maybe uh, that there was a mistake with the shipping address on your shipping carrier site, stuff like that. And you can then either offer the customer to wait and for this time you will be hoping that the price goes back to be profitable or the item goes in stock again or you offer them a refund immediately but please don't just send them a refund right then and there notify them before you're going to send them a refund because that way they won't be as upset as just having their order cancelled and their money back uh, be careful here because many negative feedback is going to come from such instances so the solution is to use a good monitor a good lister and be on track and be on time when you are processing orders because an item can go out of stock or the price can change. Can I get faster shipping? Here it's an opportunity for you to make a quick buck. You can either give them, a, for example, and of course this is relevant if the item hasn't shipped yet. So you can give them uh, extra shipping, extra fast shipping and charge for it let's say seven more dollars, send them by a payment request by PayPal. And once they pay, you can upgrade their shipping on Amazon. But sometimes it gets even better because on Amazon, you have two day shipping if you're using Prime. And then if they're asking for, let's say a two day shipping when your regular shipping is stated as like three to five business days, then you don't even have to change anything on Amazon. You just charge them five or six extra dollars ship it regularly through Amazon and they will get it faster so that would be another way to increase your profit if your item has already shipped I would say that uh, don't bother tell them that unfortunately the item has already shipped you can also send them the tracking number or any other proof of shipment and that uh, they will receive their item in the next couple of days Next one, can you cancel my order? Uh, this one is uh, pretty straightforward. If the order has already shipped on Amazon, try to cancel it. If it can't be canceled and you will be receiving an, a definite answer within like 20 minutes if Amazon, Amazon succeed or didn't succeed in canceling this order. So if you, were, you managed to cancel this order, then great. If not, uh, then you can tell them that unfortunately the order has already shipped and we can't cancel it. Uh, obviously, if you haven't yet processed the order, then yeah, you can cancel, cancel their order and return their money. So, uh, nothing wrong here. Now, some people suggest telling right away that you can't cancel the order even though you haven't shipped it yet. And this is because... Uh, that way you might uh, still have the profit of the purchase that uh, they just made. But this can be also risky because people can get upset and then leave you negative feedback and it's really not worth the two, three or five dollars that you're getting from it. Can I change the address? Uh, this one is, uh, is tricky because 
sometimes you can ship to another address from your supplier where when it's Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot and stuff like that. And sometimes if they want to change the address you cannot ship to that address. Also if the order has already shipped then you can't really intercept it or it will take a lot of time talking to Amazon customer support or uh, trying to cancel the shipment somehow. So I wouldn't bother. I would just say simply that the order order has already shipped or if it hasn't shipped then you know before you order it you can see if you can send it to another address. Also please be aware that PayPal and eBay's seller protection policy will only work on the address that is the verified shipping address of the person that bought from you. So let's say someone bought from you from an address in California and then they asked you to ship it to actually to New Jersey and something happens to the item eBay will ask you to have a proof of a shipment, a tracking number. If the tracking number shows that the item was sent not to California and the address that the buyer uh, put in his PayPal but to another place, let's say New Jersey, uh, some other city, then you won't be covered so you will lose money. So be careful with that. What I usually say that is that uh, no, unfortunately eBay allows me only to uh, send to the address uh, with which you paid on PayPal or the eBay uh, buyer seller policy uh, requires me to send it to that specific address. Okay, so I wouldn't take the risk. Okay, so these are the main post-purchase item hasn't arrived yet inquiries and how to answer them. Now let's go to instances where the item actually arrived and what we can expect from buyers to ask us. Part is missing. Let's say you sent an item that includes several, uh, several items within, it, within the package. Sometimes there are mistakes made by Amazon and uh, in this case what I would do is instead of bothering contacting Amazon and asking them to send this specific uh, 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 item or asking them for a partial refund I would just offer the buyer a full refund if they return the item. So I will create a return shipping label for them and ask them to return and then refund their money. And then with that money they can either buy from me again or buy from someone else, I don't really care. Always keep in mind that time is money and you don't want to spend um, many long minutes with Amazon customer support or with your customer to try to just have this adjustment of one part. The simple solution is just a return shipping label and a refund. Next question or a problem is item arrived broken. Here the answer is simple. Just send the shipping label and then uh, you will refund them. No need for a replacement, no need for anything else. I don't uh, take the risk of sending them a replacement because sometimes the item that's originally from Amazon is bad. Maybe the seller, the FBA seller or Amazon uh, ordered a bad stock of a hundred broken items and then if you send this customer another replacement they will be even more angry because they returned the first one and they thought they will receive a complete new one but they didn't. So I always go with a refund. Next one is I don't like it I want a refund. By the way, for this one and the one before that, actually for all of these, you have to remember that your supplier has a limited time where you can return the item. It's usually 30 days. So if a buyer is uh, complaining about something that's broken or they want a refund or a, and a return, make sure in your return policy that you have 30 day return and not 60 day return because uh, you will encounter, en encounter problems and eBay will be on buyer's side. Okay, this way if you put 30 days then if a buyer makes problems for you after let's say 40 or 45 days then eBay will be on your side or at least they will be neutral and not be automatically 
on buyer's side. So if the buyer doesn't like the item and wants a refund and it's in the time frame of 30 days, you can either offer them to return it for free or if you assume that they will have a good uh, relationship with you or they won't have a negative feedback put on your account, then you can charge them a small fee of returning the item. And this is specifically when they don't like the item and they're returning it not because of our fault that the item is broken, but because they just decided they don't want and it's completely reasonable to offer a return label for let's say four or five or six dollars. That's a way for you to conserve your profit or to make a profit even if the item uh, is being returned and refunded. The next one is received the wrong item and uh, this is the same as item arrived broken. Uh, you don't bother with the asking the buyer for proof or uh, asking them to send a photo of the item. You just send them a return label for a refund. Okay, so this covers pretty much 90 to 95 percent of the questions, inquiries or cases you will get. Remember, keep it simple. It doesn't have to be very complicated. The whole idea is that you spend uh, the least amount of your time on customer support and instead invest in putting good items, in optimizing your items, in developing your store, even opening other stores, other new accounts and making more money. This is the bottom line. And just to reiterate again, the inquiries that you want to put most of your attention to is the post-purchase inquiries. Pre-purchase inquiries uh, will not result in most cases in purchases, so don't spend a lot of time on it. If there's something that requires too much time, then just don't bother. And lastly, I want to give you some general guidelines, again, to be effective in your communication and to minimize the time you spend and the issues that you receive. So first of all, be kind. And this is, by the way, is a guideline or all these three pointers are guidelines that I also give to my virtual assistants, meaning the people that work for my store and offer customer support. And this is true for all the communications you have with buyers. So be kind. eBay buyers have tremendous power over sellers by leaving whatever feedback they want and they know it, which means that they can put a negative, a neutral or a positive feedback to you. You as a seller can only put a positive feedback. So that's a big disadvantage uh, on our end. So try to be very courteous, very kind. Uh, include words like thank you, sincerely, gladly. It really does improve the customer experience and uh, makes it uh, less likely that they will leave uh, bad uh, feedback. There is also the reciprocity principle, which means that if you are being nice and if you are being uh, um, very listening to your customer, to their needs and to their problems, they will reciprocate back and will be kind to you. So they will be less likely to give you negative feedback because at least they feel like you tried and you were good to them. Okay, so includes words like uh, thank you sincerely, gladly, it really helps. Next one, personalize. And instead of sending them the regular templates of uh, uh, dear buyer, thank you for contacting me and then your item has shipped. Instead, try to personalize it by using their own name if you have it available. Let's say, dear Debra, thank you for contacting me and mention their specific item. Your uh, pressure cooker or your lawnmower or whatever they bought specifically has shipped. Okay, this will make them the feeling that you really consider them as an important part of your business. You don't just send them something that is a template and forget about it. Next one is keep it simple. And this really wraps it up uh, really nicely. Uh, you don't have to overwhelm your buyer and yourself actually with 10 possible solutions. You have to offer ideally one or two at most uh, solutions and then ask if it works for them or what they would prefer. And then they will usually choose one of those and this will make it uh, easy for you to follow and easy for them to choose. I know about people who really 
try to make things more complicated and they think that by doing so they offer the best service to the customer because they give them so many options. But that's not the case. In reality, the customer gets frustrated with too many options. It confuses them. Sometimes the options are not really clear. Sometimes something is very partial and you don't and they don't know if it's beneficial for them dollar to dollar or if it's not beneficial and it just makes for a bad customer experience. So keep it simple, make uh, one or two solutions and let the buyer choose from them or at most the buyer could offer what they would prefer and if it's okay by you then all good. Okay, wow, I see that this is a very, very long presentation, much longer than I expected. However, I am happy that we did so because it really gives you some good guidelines, some good hints of how to save more time and how to really become better at customer support. Now, since you're still here and you waited until the end, I want to give you another very, very big tip which will save you a lot of time. Create templates. And what I mean by that is that it can be something simple as creating a spreadsheet where in one column you put the questions that the customers ask. So you can cover like 95% of these questions, uh, especially with the ones that I showed you before and others that you encounter in your business. And on the column next to it, you put the solution or you put the text that you're going to send the customer as a response. And in that text, just leave the relevant places for, um, let's say it's like a placeholders for what is going to change. Let's say it's the tracking number that you're going to change, or maybe the product name. But other than that, the template is the same. And then all you have to do, once you see such a customer message, you just copy your answer from this spreadsheet paste it as an answer and then remove the um, uh, placeholders and paste the relevant information instead. Let's say the tracking number or the item name. Believe me, it will save, save you a lot of time. It will make your customer support task a lot, a lot shorter and more efficient. So thanks again, have a great day and wow, this was the longest video, but I'm really happy that we did it. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.